many people are joining us virtually. I crave our indulgence to point at them and say, welcome to the second half. Hallelujah. The Lord has given us a very, very wonderful theme for this month of July. It simply says laughter. And in somebody's life, an end has come to sorrow. And laughter begins right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Within that theme, I will be sharing with us very briefly. A fresh start will be the title of the message. For you it shall be a fresh start, bringing a lot of joy, a lot of laughter. I know I'm talking to the three people. That's where I can hear only three amen. amen. Sorrow is a terrible thing. And may you never experience sorrow in any form again in the name of Jesus. For the rest of this year, you wake up in joy, you go to bed in joy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So the message is titled, A Fresh Start. We take the text from Genesis 21. I will read the first three verses. Genesis 21, 1, 2, and 3. Brother, it's nice to see you. God bless you. <laughs> the camera picked you somewhere. All right, let's give the Lord a big hand and sister TTM. I love being John. Glory be to God. Brother, and sister TTM, well, well, you know, family life ministry leader for 10 solid years. Come on, let me celebrate them once again. It's always a joy to, to see you again and again. Genesis 21, 1 to 3. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah had brought to him, Isaac. A fresh start is God's promise that every child of God can look forward to. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, Remember ye in all the former things, neither consider the things of old. Say, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? Shall we even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert? That's a prophecy for someone. And I want your amen to be very loud if that is you. you. See, a fresh start can be corporate or personal. Anna experienced a new thing, personal to her. In 1 Samuel 2, 1 and 2, she began to sing because God had visited her, so-called barren. But now, God had blessed her not only with Samuel, but five others. It doesn't matter what has brought tears of sorrow to your eyes. It's going to end this time around and laughter will resume in the mighty name of Jesus. The lame man at the beautiful gate in Acts 3, 1 to 8 walked for the first time. It was a fresh start. Whatever has incapacitated you over this period of time gives way now and you begin to make rapid progress. If you receive that, let your amen confirm that. But those are, you know, fresh starts at personal level. When Israel left the slave market in Egypt, it was a national fresh start in Exodus chapter 12. When the siege over Samaria was over, it was a fresh start over that city. So it can be personal, it can be corporate, but it can even be family. Because Abraham and Sarah received a fresh start as a family with the birth of Isaac. I just want to prophesy to your life this morning. Somehow in me, I believe God is giving somebody a fresh start in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now let's look at this subject in the ABC of it. So ABC of a fresh start. A, I will say to have a fresh start, you must be away with the former, away with the former. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 that we quoted earlier says, Remember ye not the former things. He's saying, get away with the former. The old is the enemy of the new. If you are stuck with the old, you will find it difficult to embrace the new. And it's about anything and everything in life. Many years ago, when we lived in our former house, we had our trash can in a particular place, perhaps for about five, six years. 
And as women can do sometimes, my wife decided to change the trash can to a different corner. And every morning I went to the old place and then I realized, oh my God, she moved it. And then I would trash in the new place. And you thought I remember. Next day, I went to the old place. It's so serious when we are stuck in old things that have repeated itself over and over. Because when we now have freedom and breakthrough, it's difficult to embrace it. In that same house, coming from that house to church, there are about five traffic lights, and they are like one minute, perhaps shorter, maybe 30 seconds, one to another. So I got to the first one, it was red light, of course I stopped. 30 seconds after I got to the next one, it was red light, I stopped. The third one, I stopped. The fourth one, I stopped because they were red, back to back. When I got to the fifth one, it was green. Can you guess what I did? I stopped. Now, if, you, if you're used to failing, the day you're going to succeed, you might see success and embrace failure still. We must not be stuck with the old. If you are stuck with the old, you will find it difficult to embrace the new. Abraham was not stuck with Ishmael. He knew that someone greater is coming in Isaac. The athlete that is stuck with the former glory may lose out of the latter glory. I mean, in my final year in college, my roommate was a marathoner, meaning he could run long distance. And he's been a champion for a while. Now, the last race for him on campus was forthcoming. And I was telling him, hey, you have not even been practicing lately. He said, I know all the people that will run with me. Oh, man, I, I, I've run all of them. So okay. The day came. He didn't practice. And they were going the first round. Second round, he was way ahead of everybody. By the ninth round, he was almost 300 meters ahead of the next person. But just about perhaps 20 meters to the end of the race, he just slumped. And we're calling his name Roll, Roll, because if he had just rolled, he would have finished. But he didn't have the energy to roll. He was stuck in the old glory. He was stuck in the former glory that he could not receive this latter glory about to come. And every other, they didn't take him out. If it was America, they would have taken him out. Because somehow we believe that he will roll and still finish before anybody could come. And everybody ran past him. And he came last. Even though he was first up till 20 meters to end. When you are stuck in the former glory. And you don't think there is something higher that you can strive for. The hold can become the enemy of the new. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I can't know myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press forward to the mark for the price of the eye calling in God in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter how great first half has been for you of this year. There is something greater in the second half. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I like your amen. But let me say it one more time. It doesn't matter how great first half has been. The second half will be greater. Amen. Will be more glorious. In the name of Jesus. And if it has been challenging, get ready. It's a fresh start of joy. A fresh start of glory. In the name of Jesus. No matter what you have today, tomorrow promises something better. Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much of any man who is not wiser today than he was yesterday. Henry Ford, he said, anyone who stops learning is old, either at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young, end of quote. To be stuck with the hold is to sob in the tears of missed opportunities. What you knew yesterday is not enough for tomorrow. You must learn something new today in readiness for tomorrow. That's why the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 32. No matter your calling, profession or career, without relevant information, you don't have a future. That's why we must strive at all times to be fresh. Learn something new every day. 
and learn from everyone who can impact your life. They might be younger than you are. If they have something you don't have, sit down with them and learn. Away with former things. Something new is around. B, be, be expectant. Be expectant. For Abraham, in Genesis 18 verse 14, Genesis 18 verse 14, the Lord spoke to him when he seems to have lost hope. The Bible says it's anything too hard for the Lord. Genesis 18, 14. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Somebody's season of laughter has finally come. In the mighty name of Jesus. It was recorded to the credit of Abraham and Sarah that they were expectant of the promise. I know they laughed. That's the only thing we always say, that they laughed in unbelief. Oh, that is true. But I'm sure you knew that they slept together before Sarah became pregnant. If they were not believing God, because Abraham had lost what he took, or he takes, for a man to get on the wife. But he said, well, God spoke. You never know. Let's try. That's why the Bible recorded it as faith. For Abraham, Sarah, Romans 4, verse 18. Romans 4, 18. Who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be, verse 19. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body, now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. We must be expectant, beloved. Expectation precedes manifestation. Proverbs 23, 18. Proverbs 23, 18. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. I thank God because somehow the way as wired my wife and I is such that it doesn't matter what is going on, we are thinking of a better tomorrow, always. I mean, I can create a future in a moment. And if something is happening like this that looks very ugly, but by the side, I create a different future based on the word of God. But the word says, say it to the righteous, it shall be well with him. If you let the ugliness of the moment consume you, you begin to look ugly even to yourself. What you focus on is magnified. You focus on the problem, it gets bigger. That's why we must be expectant of a better tomorrow always. When a man has put a limit on what he will do, he has put a limit on what he can do. You will become on the outside what you believe on the inside. Blessed is he who expects nothing, for he shall never be disappointed. Benjamin Franklin said, you don't expect anything, oh, you are more than likely not to get anything. You won't be disappointed. If you take the bad news as final, you will likely miss the good news that is ahead. If you take the bad news as final, you will likely miss the good news that is ahead. Two people got the same information. They were diagnosed of stage four cancer. Stage four cancer diagnosis means death medically. But the truth is, <laughs> when God is in the equation, if there was a stage five cancer, it could still mean life. Now, the way you process it is one dis what decides the way you then hand. So one of them said, oh, death. And immediately he began to die. But a second one that says, I've heard stories of people that survived stage four cancer. I may just be one of, one of them. In any case, he, he then decided to put laughter in other people's life. And he began with an orphanage on the way to his house. He said, I've been seeing this, this place. Let me send my driver to them. And he sent a $1 million check because the two of them were millionaires. And then 
When the messenger got there, the children were dancing and singing with their empty plates and sliver where they, they turned into a drum because there was nothing. And the owner of the orphanage, a Christian, said, well, if the plates are not useful for food because we don't have food, then let's turn them to drum set. It was while they were rejoicing that the guy came and said, somebody in the hospital died, has this check for you. He said, what? One million dollars? We... There's even no food in this old place. The children said, can we visit him and pray for him? So, of course. And the children went. They got there. He saw them. And he laughed. He said, why? God bless you, children. He said, sir, can we pray for you? So, of course. The children prayed for him. He didn't last another week. He was completely healed. And if you are clapping and, you know, clap unto the Lord. If you take the bad news as final, you will likely miss the good news that is ahead. I told you of somebody diagnosed of HIV AIDS. And he began to die immediately, some, some years back. But it was a wrong diagnosis. He wasn't dying of HIV AIDS, he was dying of stroke. Because when he had the news, he was like, what's left? And then they repeated the test only to find out that he wasn't it was negative. And I told you before, when my wife and I went to get um, the green card uh, medical report, we won the green card, you have to go to the hospital to do tests before your family will be given the card and then. So we got to the place, we did the vitals in the morning, everything was good. They said in the afternoon we should come for the HIV test result. So we got there, they called some name to sit on the left and some name to sit on the right. And my, my wife and I were on the left. And somebody said, oh, I know what they are doing. Somebody who had come here before said, everybody on the left are positive of HIV AIDS. <laughs> and those who are on the right are the ones free. I looked at my wife, she looked at me. Then I suddenly remember, I believe the devil reminded me, I had a tooth extraction some weeks past. And the nurse who did it, all the fingers were in my mouth. It was terrible. I said, that's how you got it. And you have met your wife since then. That's how she got it. Immediately, my blood pressure rose high. Now, everybody coming from the doctor's office from the left side, they were not smiling. So you see, <laughs> they got the bad news. When it was my turn, finally, I got to the doctor. He put the blood pressure thing. The thing was high. I said, ah, what's wrong with you? I said, HIV, HIV. He said, what about it? <laughs> and the guy said, oh, you are negative. I was dying. When you take the bad news as final, you will likely miss the good news that is ahead. Whatever you hold tight-fisted to will prevent the better from coming in. C, I think I will close there. Change your old ways. We're talking about a fresh start. I said to get a fresh start, the ABCA, do away, away with the former and embrace the new. B, be expectant. And then as I close, see, change your old ways. Change your old ways. Listen, as I 43, 18, say, remember ye not the former things. Now that consider the things of hold. Abraham had some past. But as he matured in the Lord, he began to do away with the whole things. The idolatry. And all the different things in his, in his life from the family background. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Until something changes within you, nothing changes around you. It is only changed men that become world changers. The disciples of Jesus needed to change to become world changers. Let me tell you about their hold in Luke 22, verse 24. Luke 22, 24. And there was also a strife among them. Which of them should be accounted the greatest? They were quarreling about title, who is better than the other. And they ran into many troubles. But on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, 1. Acts 2, 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. In one place, they have changed. And so the power fell on them. Anyone who will move the world must first move himself. Change your ways. Everyone around you cannot be all bad and you are the only good person. 
Say they don't like me. Ah, you live in Cinco Ranch. They, they didn't like you. You worked in Walmart. They didn't like you. You resigned. You moved to Kroger. They didn't like you. You resigned. You moved to which one? Target. They didn't like you. You, have, you, you alone, you have been in five churches in five months. You are the only fellow right. Everybody is bad. No, watch yourself. Prayer does not work when obedience is demanded. If what is demanded is obedience, you can fast 100 days until you go to obedience, you won't get the result. Be neat inside and outside. It's very important. I don't know why people like to look good outside, but they don't care on the inside. And this is both physical and spiritual. I mean, women are very interesting people. One day I was, we were doing prayer, prayer of deliverance here. Oh my God. I mean, I couldn't close my eyes I wanted to. Because the thing they used to cover the head was flying everywhere. And then you see the original thing on the inside. I say, oh my God, what is this? The hair was unkempt, so dirty, the woman just put something on it. And once that thing goes on, everything looks good. And say, these people's husbands are in real trouble. Because they see the bad stuff at home, we see the good stuff outside. Don't look, don't want to look good outside when you are rotting on the inside. The man who should see the, see the good things, see the bad stuff. And I just like this again. I'm and I said, I said, what's going on here? Don't like to be good outside when you are unclean. But it's also true spiritually. Spiritually, we show this, this face outside. But when nobody is there, God, who should see the good thing in your closet, you, you're showing him the bad stuff. Now, let me close. You cannot spend hours of prayers to lose weight when you are not willing to change your diet. I think I need to close now. You know, let's, let's, close. Got, I, let, let's close this thing. Let's close. Let's close. Let's close this way. <laughs> let's close this way. Now, there is an area of your life you must change this morning. If you are ready for the change, then rise up. Rise up. If you are ready for the change, you are ready for the change. Rise up and just talk to the Almighty God. Please, Lord, give me a fresh start. Give me a fresh start. Give me a fresh start. My Lord and oh my God, give me a fresh start. Give me a fresh start. I need, I need a fresh start. Give me a fresh start. Give me a fresh start. Oh, give me a fresh start. In second half, this is the beginning of the second half of this year. I need a fresh start. Lord, give me a fresh start. Cry to him. Give me a fresh start. In the name of Jesus, please give me a fresh start. I need a fresh start. I need a fresh start. In the name of Jesus, give me a fresh start. If you are here, you've never given your life to Jesus before. Or you have done so, but you know that right now you are not a Christian. You know you are in sin. This is the time to have a fresh start. The Lord is willing to give you a fresh start. Just indicate and raise your hand and say, Lord, I'm the one. I need a fresh start. Lift your hand up if you need a fresh start in any area of your life, particularly if you have been a Christian before, but you've backslidden and you want a fresh start with Christ. Then lift your hands up or you have never given your life to Christ at all. Lift it. I can see that hand. Lift it up. Lift it up. Don't be shy. I'm not sure we get to you. They will get your name for me quickly and then we'll be praying for you. Is there another person anywhere else? Maybe in the virtual church. They will show you how to contact, with, contact us even after now. But make sure you are telling God, I need a fresh start. I need a fresh start. My Father and my God, I thank you. I thank you for your word. We are in need of a fresh start. In every area of our lives where we need a fresh start. Help us to make the necessary changes now in the name of Jesus. Let it be a fresh start of laughter, of joy, of victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for those that are saying, Lord, I need a fresh start with you. Please save their souls. As backsliders are coming back home, Father, please restore them. And for all of us, let it be a fresh start. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name forevermore. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.
Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. And then you may please be seated. Hallelujah. 